In the morass of modern rock music, there every once in a while emerges an artist of exceptional caliber, when his very ideas themselves change the whole face of popular culture. But more often than not, you get a group like Eddie Crap and the Earwigs, one of the more unusual, yet understandably least discussed groups of the 60s. Earwigs with a brainchild of Thornton Sunburn, entrepreneur and former pie warmer in a central London curtain extension factory. He enlisted the help of Gordon Napalm, a male model and female figurine. At Sunburn's insistence, Napalm became Eddie Crap, singing superstar, in spite of his limited musical experience and, in fact, talent. Mother explains. Gordon was always a very pretty boy, but no one really thought much of him as a singer. No one thought much of him as a talker, as a matter of fact. Horrible voice he had. Sometimes we'd be just sitting around the tea table having a natter when the police would roll up and say the neighbours had been complaining and would we mind turning Gordon down. But he always looked like a star, our Gordon. If only he'd kept his bloody mouth shut. Ignoring this disability, Sunburn immediately sent Eddie and his hastily assembled band into the studio to record You're My Chutney, a tender ballad of mashed fruit and preservatives, which became the Earwig's first paving stone on the stepladder of success. The public were captivated by the group's unique sound. Thornton Sunburn himself explains. Well, at the time, everyone was into the Mersey sound three guitars and a drummer. But we was rebels right from the start, so we had 11 drummers and only one guitar, which we used to hit the drums with. Unfortunately, the pigskin drought of 1966 forced the group to abandon this unconventional lineup. The single, however, was an instant nationwide hit, Just Add Water, and the earwigs were raced back into the studio to record Don't Let My Tinea Upset You, a song which more or less defined the so-called horrible sound. Don't let my tinier upset you. Don't let my eczema make you cry. Please don't make a rash decision and pass me on by. Don't let my tinier upset you and pass me on by. It was, however, the recording of this song which split the original band apart. Sunburn again. Well, Eddie came in earlier than the others to lay his vocals down which he insisted on doing before the music had been recorded, or even written. The other earwigs rolled up later and were shocked to discover that I had already recorded their parts, played by studio hairdressers, and far better than they could have done as well. The band had a quick get-together, and it was Splitsville. I only wish that Eddie could have rolled up later too, then it would have been the perfect session. The new song was again a local smash, but more importantly, stamped them as part of the British invasion, which sacked Normandy and raped and pillaged Czechoslovakia. In the wake of his success, Eddie realised he would have to hit the road. With Sunburn, he set about the task of acquiring a replacement band. Unfortunately, it was a Salvation Army band, and the tour bombed. Roger Dripping was one of the roadies. It was disastrous. I mean, it was bloody disastrous. It was a right shocker, if you know what I mean. I mean, the crowd had come there expecting to see the latest pop sensation. What did they get? The bleeding salvos. I mean, we had to erect a barricade at some of the later gigs to stop the uh, police from rushing the stage. But um, we did collect 87 kopecks in the tambourine. Attempting to leave this sour experience behind him, Eddie recorded single number three, Try My Thigh, which sank without trace in spite of its catchy chorus. With his career at a low ebb, Eddie, like all musicians in times of trouble, turned back to the blues to see if he could milk any success out of that. Thornton Sunburn. It all came from the blues. Everything he ever done came directly from the Mississippi Delta blues. He used to listen to them all. Blind Lemon Jefferson, Def Lime Hutchinson, and most of all, Mute Apricot Cheesecake. I think you can see a direct link in their vocal styles there. And so, them low-down shitful blues was released to the acclaim of earplug manufacturers the world over. But this change of style did nothing to boost the Earwigs flagging sales. Their album, Earwigs Live and Crawling, had only 12 copies pressed, of which eight remain unsold to date. Eddie resorted to his former name and became a roof rack, vowing never to return to the fickle world of showbiz. Thornton Sunburn went on to a successful solo career, guzzling soft drink whilst canoeing down mountain slopes. Eddie Crap and the Earwigs, testimony of the pop's golden era, was a load of smegma.
you seem so willing, baby, to try it all. My body held you in some strange kind of thrall. You tried my left foot, baby, and then my right. But when I said try my thigh, you just fled in fright. Try my thigh. I really don't know why it makes you want to cry when you try my thigh. You tried my nostrils, baby, and made them flare. You tried my fingernails, and then my hair. You tried my buttocks, baby, and then my knee. But how come is it that you won't try all of me? Try my thigh. I really don't know why. It makes you want to cry when you try my thigh. You tried my eyebrows, baby, and then my chin. You tried my stomach, baby, and fell right in. You clambered up my windpipe and tried my chest. There's one place you won't try, though. You've tried all the rest. Try my thigh. I really don't know why. It makes you want to cry when you try my thigh. It makes me wonder, baby, what's wrong with me? You've tried my shins, my ankles, a toe of three. My earlobes and eyebrows. You tried all these. But there's just one place left, so try my thigh, please. Try my thigh. I really don't know why it makes you want to cry when you try my thigh. Laugh You Bastards was a bugger me, what a load of old crap production from the studios of Channel 31.